Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Taskmaster is Wonderful Podcasts. I'm Eric, and today I have embarked upon watching Bestie Test, the Swedish version of Taskmaster. Uh, this first season is just four episodes. I thought I was going to do one episode about the entire season, but once I got into actually watching it, man... It, it's so good it's um it's a lot of fun there are some key differences from the original uk show um i'm gonna go through all that as i run down this episode um but it is a solid hour instead of just 45 minutes and to talk about four solid hours in just one episode was gonna be a lot um but i got pretty extensive with the notes um i had a lot of fun watching this um you can watch uh bestie test which translates to best in test um on the official taskmaster youtube the first two seasons are on there um there have been five maybe six i think there have been six and then the seventh season is upcoming uh, but only the first two seasons are on um, the official Taskmaster YouTube, or uh, you can also watch them on Taskmaster Supermax. But um, yeah, luckily there's a whole lot of episodes. Uh, if I'm doing just one a week, uh, it's going to be uh, a couple of months before I'm out of um, out of these ones. But um, anyway, so bestie test is hosted by the taskmaster uh babin larson um who is an actor and comedian uh and her assistant is, is david sundin who is a tv presenter and comedian there in sweden i tried my best to uh to make note of the how to pronounce everybody's names but i apologize if i did get them wrong at all so hopefully i'm pretty close but uh one of the big differences is um both on this show and on the finnish version um might be in other versions as well is that they don't have five regular contestants they only have four regular contestants and then the fifth chair is a different guest each week and uh a cool thing about that um it seems like is that it's kind of like an audition to become a regular contestant on a future season. Um, so that's where I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting all these guests and then seeing which ones go on to be regular contestants on future, future seasons. Um, another thing I saw, I, I've been trying to avoid spoilers. It's kind of hard to do that when you're looking up, uh especially when you're trying to look up stats and things like that um i've been going to taskmaster.info this website is amazing it's it's very comprehensive about um the tasks themselves um it looks great on mobile um the person who put this website together actually i'm going to look that up right now i don't know if there's a whole team behind um, behind the site um, but the uh, the copyright at the bottom is uh, Carl Craven uh, appears to be the owner of the site and it's just so well well put together all the different tasks links all the tasks together what was the original version of this task um, if there is one all that it's amazing so sh huge huge shout out to taskmaster.info they describe the project of as obsessively documenting the international taskmaster franchise uh, warning this site is lousy with spoilers so just a blanket spoiler warning because everything refers to everything pretty much so and anyway um another thing about having the guest contestant is that fifth chair um for the, the entirety of the series is considered a team um so so the guest contestant um points are uh are cumulative to go up against the regular contestants um which is a pretty cool thing too okay so our regular contestants for season one are uh bianca kronluf 
um, who's an actress, uh, Kodio um, uh, Akalor, uh, who's a TV and radio host, uh, Klaus Melnberg, who is a stand-up and actor, and Pia Johansson, Pia Johansson, who is an actor and lecturer. And then um, this first episode's guest is uh, Kelly Zachary Wallstrom. He's a TV host and a writer, and he really reminds me of an of an American actor. I think maybe an American actor uh, or somebody who I've seen before. I can't put my finger on it, but um, it's it's not Jeffrey Dean Morgan, although there is some similarity there. But it's another think of another person who also has that same sort of vibe. Anyway, he he seems like a real cool dad. <laughs> maybe rides a motorcycle and he he really solidifies that with this first task not uh, but we'll get to that first task first we have the prize task here's another big difference from the original show is that the um the prizes are presented kind of like a uh um like a price is right sort of thing they're filmed on a pedestal rotating pedestal and uh they just have a short little blurb about each thing um and it's 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 kind of quick and i was worried about that i i thought we were missing out on having the the panelists there in the studio to talk about everything there's a little bit of elaboration on stuff not nearly as much on the original but as it turns out, there's a lot more stuff in the, uh, not a whole lot more, but it's more than made up for with uh, in-studio tasks and, and stuff like that. And then uh, I, I read that after the first two seasons, they changed the prize task to be something that the uh, production chooses um, that kind of fits the theme of the episode um and so nobody brings any prize tasks in from season three onward um so i'll eventually i'll get there and i'll see that seems like it would work pretty well especially with what they're going for with the rest of um this show's format in addition to that there are a few items and i will mention these as we go as we uh come across them that get added to that prize pool um and that's a pretty fun idea because there ends up being some pretty unique items um, coming out of all the tasks. Um, but this first episode's prize task, the most unusual thing, a pretty general guideline for this. Um, uh, uh, this is not the order they are presented in, uh, but the order that they were scored with just one point. Calais has brought in a kettlebell, which is not really unusual for him. But it is a it is a pretty heavy one. I think it was like ninety six kilograms, which is that's really that's really heavy. Then two points goes to Pia, who brought in a yarn separator. But then she tried to sweeten the pot. It did not get her any additional points, but she tried to uh, uh, up it by adding in her sweater, which she claimed was made thanks to that yarn separator. Uh, then three points goes to Klaus. Um, it was his friend's toenail that was found in a sandwich for, uh, the whole thing, the whole, ev the whole story about this, this is the most elaborated upon prize that we, we had, um, the whole story behind it, it, it made sense in its own way, but I was not on board with anything going on. <laughs> with that at all if i if i won this episode that would go straight well i would give it back to him maybe probably probably that but otherwise it would go straight in the trash so it'd be nicer just to give it back um four points go to bianca who uh had one of her adult teeth uh it was which she clarifies um she, she got she got lots of points for it G good good on you for uh bringing him these bot all those body body parts shedded body parts pretty gross uh, but then kodio uh has brought in a handmade mirror which uh the way they filmed it was kind of weird but it makes sense with it rotating and everything is it it's laying down on its back so it was really kind of confusing what it was um 
when it was shown on screen, but it had, it was kind of like a bathroom mirror with like a little shelf. Um, and actually, you know what? I wasn't paying attention when it was shown in context with everything else. I couldn't really tell how big it was. It looked like it was like just a little small thing, but it might have been a full, like a an actual actually useful mirror with an actually useful useful shelf. Anyway, it's one of a kind because he made it himself. He got the five points. Very nice. So then we go on to the first first filmed task, which was pop the bubble wrap. Uh, they have five minutes to prepare and one hundred seconds to pop. The total number of bubbles. I'm not sure. Uh, it's more than 2,460. But whoever whoever had to count the number of bubbles popped, that is quite the undertaking. I applaud the, uh, uh, the people on production who had to do that. <laughs> um, but this was an unaired UK task in both season one and season three. So we have never seen it on the UK series but um it has made its way onto television on a couple of different um of the international versions including this one so for one point we had klaus who um he took the bubble wrap outside (laughs) and i think this is this was his biggest mistake because the ground outside was seemed to be very soft there's lots of grass and other underbrush and so as whatever he was pressing down against it did not have a hard very hard surface to press against Um, his most successful popping was from uh uh, when he got down onto his knees um and he also kept going back and forth from the shed trying to find other things to try um so he lost a lot of time there he only popped 669 bubbles which i thought sounded like a lot um but as it turned out there's way more bubbles than that so he didn't he didn't really pop that many um bianca gets right into it and she flips the table (laughs) over onto the bubble wrap which did when it when it was first landed on its side that popped a bunch but then when it landed flat upside down it did not pop really anything also i was a little bit confused why she she was just in socks and she was stomping stomping on it with her just with her socked feet shoes are much better for this and i think that is a big reason why she only got second uh two points with 1289 bubbles popped um pia she does a lot of dancing like tap dancing on the bubble wrap with her shoes on um and she's singing there's no business like show business and uh she does very well she pops 1929 uh kodio gets four points for popping 2460 he basically just gets gets right in there and is wrestling with the bubble wrap on the floor um what i thought i would do is that twisting bubble wrap is really good at uh for popping it so i think i i would have taken the approach of um like kind of going like processing processing (laughs) the the length of bubble wrap as though it were i were spinning some yarn or something just just going down and forming a rope of it and twisting it i i feel like that would have been more effective than the four people who have gone so far but then kale nails it with a very dangerous method (laughs) he takes it outside and uh creates this whole like uh fire starting device to uh to be safely away from it um he must have put lighter fluid on it or something but also the entire yard like everything outdoor is covered in fallen leaves and i am amazed that well one that he was allowed to do this and that when he did do this it wasn't a catastrophe they must have had fire extinguishers like right off camera but um not just the extinguishers but people holding them ready to use it 
but he sets the whole thing on fire and so he therefore pops all the bubbles gets the five points and the charred remains the toxic molten plastic remains are added to the prize pool so yeah he's off to a great start um klaus and bianca not so much um this leads us to the middle of the program which turns into a live task calls ved duvad or uh would you know and uh this is the part of the the show where david interviews the guests to get to know them better but um oh, all of his his questions are just leading him to uh say that he he enjoys wood uh to introduce this segment of would you know um the task is to figure out what david has in his pocket uh kind of a nefarious thing to get everybody to do to feel his leg basically um but uh he goes down the line um everybody has 15 seconds to feel his pocket and ask him yes or no questions um the biggest helpful answers that they got um were that it was something from the kitchen not everybody has one and that you could get hurt using it the guesses were pia guessed an egg slicer kodio guessed a sausage cutter um klaus guessed a timer um, also, from from what I could see, it seemed like it was a long object, like uh, I was thinking like a cheese grater or something like that. You could not tell what shape it was visually. They obviously could tell that it was a circular shape. So these all of these guesses do make sense. Um, Callie guessed a cigar cutter. Um, I guess you would keep that in the kitchen, maybe. Um, and Bianca guessed a divider of things um the 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 item was an egg divider which is like a metal ring with these triangular blades that like are kind of spring loaded that you press and they they go inwards i had never seen one of these um it does make sense as a device now that i have seen it but um I don't know. I I feel like it would do. I, I the effectiveness of it other uh compared to just cracking an egg. I don't know. Maybe it's more of a uh, for a hard boiled egg, but in anyway, uh, Pia is the closest with the egg slicer. She gets three points. Uh, Kodio because um his was uh pretty close with the sausage cutter gets two points although i would say cigar cutter should be is also as close as that i don't know the other three get one point each um the next film task is find out about the icelandic person oh i should say as far as i know there's there's not been any task like <laughs> would you know um on any other series but maybe there will be for maybe maybe it, uh, it's maybe would you know is is the same game every week um okay but find out about the icelandic person uh they enter a room to see a firefighter sitting there and he says hello or something but in icelandic um his name is trosty and um he is only allowed to answer in icelandic he is able to understand swedish um i'm sure he's able to speak it in real life as well um but he he can't answer or write in swedish uh this is a variation of the uk series um two episode one task find out about the swedish person obviously they couldn't copy that directly because that they'd just be speaking the same language um so they have five minutes to find out the answers to the most questions he can only answer in icelandic um but he does like i said he does understand swedish but they aren't specifically told that so there are a couple of people <laughs> like Calais is like drawing pictures to try to ask the questions um instead of you know just asking the questions in swedish and he'll he can answer them despite bianca seeming the most baffled out of everyone she totally nails it um i mean not totally she but she gets the most correct items um, so the questions are, uh, 
they're very similar to the original task of their his birthday, his father's job of selling computers, his favorite food, some kind of sausage meal, his biggest asset, his muscles, um, what he's afraid of, spiders, where he liked to travel, uh, Montenegro, and his favorite movie, Fight Club. Uh, when he's when Kodio asks him this, I I don't know if it is. I don't know why he thought it was so funny. Maybe uh, the name of Fight Club is something different in in Swedish, and maybe that was what was so funny about it. But he could not stop laughing. And then he asks him to describe the film, and he says it's like a club where they fight. And I, <laughs> yeah, that's a, I guess that's a good description of that movie. Um, but uh. Cl- uh, Klaus gets one correct item, so he gets one point. Um, Pia, Kale, and Kodio each get three correct items, so they get three points each. And then Bianca got four correct items and get four points. Um, so it is interesting. There are a lot more tasks where the number, like the score in the task, is the amount of points you get from it. Um, so there's a lot more variation Um it isn't always five, four, three, two, one split among the five in every in every task like it, it more commonly is in the UK. Also, I'm I'm not going to compare it as much um, to the UK version um, after this episode um, because we're we're establishing already what the biggest differences are. Um, so I'll, I'll just be referring to it, um, if it's a a new version of a, of a task that was originally in the UK. Next up, speaking of that, uh, this was in the very first episode of, of, of Taskmaster. This was task number four in series one, episode one, empty the bathtub fastest wins. You may not remove the plug. Um, there's like a whole pile of stuff right outside the door when they they come out of the the house um and i thought it was kind of interesting (laughs) that where they set up the bathtub it's like right underneath where a bunch of branches and leaves are hanging down there's this huge tree in front of the house and there's all these branches hanging down like right at eye level directly over the bathtub and that that must have been so annoying um but one of the items um that's outside the door is a big old yoga ball and a bunch of people use this um bianca and kale use it really well to display so they're like bouncing it into the tub and all the water is splashing out very effective um Klaus tries to use it um i i think he was trying to deflate it and then use it as a vessel to fill with water but he's messing with it for so long he abandons the idea and then the methods he does use he's very slow he's 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 very very slow at this task so with the scoring of the task uh second through third second through fourth place which is um uh, bianca in second place for four points pia third place for three points and kodio uh fourth place with two points their specific times are not said, uh, but that they were within seconds of each other. The, c- the class is way behind with six minutes and 45. Um, Calais is very fast. He he gets it done in one minute and 52 seconds. I don't think there was any, any particular trick that he used other than just getting it, getting in there and being aggressive about it. Yeah, there was no there's no controversy like there was with Tim Key accidentally unplugging the bath. <laughs> Quote unquote accidentally. Um or anything like that. Um so this was this was a very, very quick one. Um they they moved on. They pretty much showed the clips. Clips weren't very long. Ran through I mean, they went through it so quick they didn't even say the actual times for, for three <laughs> three of the five contestants. Those were the points um, extrapolated from the totals that were given um, right after that. Yeah, so thanks again to taskmaster.info for compiling that because 
I, I tried to extrapolate it and I was off and then I was confused about other stuff later, about the scores later. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to trust that they that they figured it out now that I looked it up. Um, then we had the first team task of the season, um, make a bed while holding hands. Um, this first appeared on the UK show, uh, season one, episode five, task number four. I I... I thought it was interesting that like all of these, almost all of the reworked tasks, repeated tasks were the fourth task from the episode that they're from. Probably just a coincidence. Anyway, uh, teams must make a bed to hotel standards, then lie in it, holding hands the entire time. Fastest wins. Um, so all of the team tasks, I this is a, a pretty solid idea here that all the team tasks are 2v2 um with the regular contestants and then the guest contestants guess gets points by guessing correctly which of the teams wins uh, so the teams for this season are pia and Klaus and uh versus Kodio and bianca uh so experienced versus youth and Callie chooses to to back Kodio and Bianca because he thinks that they will be uh be faster. They'll just be faster. And he was right. Um so this was a zero sum a zero sum? Is that right? But the the the, the losers of the task didn't get any points. Um and the winners of the task got three points each. Um so Kale for picking them, um Kodio and Bianca all got three points from from that one. Um, nothing really, r really special that I remember from, um, them actually doing it. Uh, I mean, they're doing it outside. Um, so they did get like lots of leaves and stuff on there. And so because of that, I'd say David was very lenient on the hotel standards aspect of it. I don't think either of them were up to hotel standards. All right, the last uh, filmed task is task number 666. I like that these tasks are numbered, although they're not, the number of the task is not always stated. Anyway, task 666, film a horror movie trailer using dairy products. They have one hour to make a dairy-based horror film trailer. Um, they have an expert guest judge, um, to, to judge this task, uh, the Swedish, Swedish film reviewer, uh, Goran Everdahl. And uh, he kind of gives a rundown of what he's looking for in the trailer, um, like, you know, scares and a story. And, of course, dairy products. That is the, maybe the most important thing, at least uh, in assessing some of these. Um, this task is has not specifically been done before the most similar one was to create a trailer for taskmaster the movie uh which was a team task um as opposed to a, this one was an individual task from uk series four episode three um and then there was a task kind of similar that came after this on the uk series in uh ser series 11 episode two make the taskmaster house haunted I'd say that one is closer to this, but it is not the original because it happened a couple of years after this one was. I, I'm going to go in the order of the points. This is not the order I would have put them in. I thought it was unfair to put Calais in last place. He, j he only got one point with his Blair Witch style trailer called Cafe, Cafe a Light Witch. Um, he was penal penalized for it not being dairy. But uh, Cafe Au Light, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, is coffee and milk. That is dairy. It has dairy in it. I think, I'd say that counts. And his was my second favorite out of the execution of it. So, yeah, I thought I thought that was pretty, un pretty unfair. But I don't know. Uh, two points goes to Kodio, who had uh, his film The Hours of the Cottage Cheese, um goran liked the uh the title a lot um but the actual film he was puppeting 
all the different dairy products with his hands very clearly in all all of the shots is about um, some bottles of milk who moved into a new house that's haunted or something like that. I I would have put this in last place with just one point. Three points goes to Klaus, who also puppets some dairy products, but his hands do not appear in the shot. Uh, there's some blue cheese uh, taking a shower, and that it, it gets uh, it gets murdered by a cow, which is played by Klaus with a uh, helmet with horns made out of bananas. Um, his, his helmet, his banana horn helmet, is added to the prize pool. But the title is film, pretty great, is Psycho. Um, I think it's PSY-KO is the Swedish, and then uh, that translates to Psycow um, in English. Very good. Uh, thir- third place, that's perfect. Yeah, I would I would have kept it in, in, in third place, but um, the second place, I would put that in, f- in, for- in fourth place. Uh, Pia, hers didn't have a whole lot of story to it. She just got scared and saw that murder red rum was written in milk, and that was called the sour milking, the filling. Yeah, I thought I thought that one was okay. It it looked good, the the production quality of it was good, but the story I felt wasn't really there. And then the, the number one, five points goes to Bianca. I I agree with with that placement. It was great. Before starting the test, she says, "Why well, I I'm already a woman alone in a house. I have a, a leg up on this." So she bases her story around that. She goes to her fridge, saying that she's recently stopped having dairy, using dairy, but the fridge is full of all kinds of dairy products. She she's she's shocked. She steps backwards into a a, a thing of cheese, and then for some reason. Uh, she changes into a, a sacrificial nightgown and it gets covered in milk and then she runs out of the wood, woods and then she throws up milk onto a camera. It's, it's great. It doesn't make, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Uh, if, if this is an actual film, I don't think it would make sense, but, uh, for a comedy sketch, a comedy trailer version of a, of a, of a horror film, it was pretty great. Then we get to the live task, which is called Beard. Uh, 15 bearded men enter the studio. Contestants must memorize their names. They will each have three of them to recall, and they get two points for each correct name for a maximum of six points. I thought that the scoring of this was a bit lenient uh, because a couple of the names, they, they got correct, but they applied those names to the wrong person out of their three so when they asked oh is, did anybody get the right name and it was like john that they said was the third person but then the second person turned their thing and they were john they still got credit for that but it kind of didn't matter a whole lot because the most that anybody got from this was one correct name this game is similar to uh, the live task from, oh, I forgot to add this to my my Google Drive notes. Um, uh, memorize the names of the uh, Australian football team. Um, <laughs> uh, there are some really, really good names uh, on that one. So these was, th- this one was like their actual names, whereas the Australian football team was like their nicknames which was made it all very interesting but uh kale gets zero points because he can't remember any of them um and bianca class pia and Kodio each get two points so it didn't really affect the score a whole lot other than kale got fourth place instead of third place um with those two points that put pia ahead of him um, but we have uh, in last place, Klaus with just 12 points, Calais with just 19 points, that's the guest spot, uh, Pia with 20 points, Kodio with 23 points, and Bianca with 25 points. So uh, Bianca is off to a great start. 
So I'm not going to speculate on who I think wins or anything like that in case that you are watching along as well and uh, and all that. So I'll try to keep um, keep all these episodes spoiler free as I inevitably get spoiled on all kinds of things. But um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it is like I said, it's a it's a solid hour every episode um and they pack so much so much in there so so there we go um again you can uh watch this in most places on the taskmaster youtube and uh taskmaster supermax so uh go check it out there um and i can't wait to watch the next one so the plan is i think I, i'm just gonna do one episode at a time of uh of bestie test here until the new season of taskmaster uk begins sometime in march i think so i think i might this might take me right to it during the first two uh seasons of of uh the swedish version here um so yeah stay tuned um and i'll be i'll be striving to put these out on sunday nights and uh so so mark your calendar subscribe um go to tiwpodcast.com um you can get all the subscription links there to either subscribe on itunes or get the rss feed to uh, subscribe in your podcaster of choice um i think the show is also now on spotify i think that got added on there i'll have to check on that but um yeah thanks for listening um let me know what your favorite moments um you know what i don't mind getting spoiled i'll try to keep the podcast spoiler free beyond the episode i'm talking about um but if you do want to tell me stuff that you're looking forward to stuff that i should be looking forward to please let me know and uh yeah i let's let's go it's gonna be great uh so thanks for thanks for listening be safe out there and I'll see you next time here on Taskmaster is wonderful. Bye.